This conference will now be recorded. All right, fantastic. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We still have a couple people coming in a little bit at a time. So uh, we just sent out a tweet. We just put in the events channel um, and we will get to our main event in just a second. I wanted to go over a little housekeeping real quick. Um, rules of engagement. Uh, this is a go-to meeting, not a webinar. So everybody has the ability to unmute themselves. Please be kind. Um, also, while everybody is presenting, um, do not put your phone on hold because we do not want to hear your hold music either. Uh, so be cognizant of that. And uh, basically, the format will be uh, our uh, fearless leader, Rod, oh, captain, my captain. Uh, he will do his presentation and intro, um, and then we will get right to our main event. So go ahead. Take it away, Rod. All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to all of you who are here for the first time or just curious about what we do. Uh, my name is Rod Soto, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Hack Miami and Pacific Hackers. And we do have a number of uh, groups that we, we put together as a percent 27. Uh, we do have a number of meetups, East Coast, West Coast, and now Europe, Spain, Barcelona, and apparently Sevilla is now joining. So the future is looking good for vacations for a lot of us. So uh, um, welcome, and uh, I hope uh, you, know, you join us. We meet every two weeks. We used to meet at the at the Broward uh, Library. We we'll probably will go back soon. We're looking at going back in August. Uh, the reason we go to the libraries is because it's open, it's free. You don't have to sign an NDA. You don't have to go to a big corp where they're gonna take your data or they're gonna ask you or sell you anything. Uh, we do the same thing on the West Coast. On the West Coast, we go to the Martin Luther King Library in San Jose, California. Um, and it's the same. It's open to everybody. You don't have to have a bachelor's degree or master's degree. You just you just need to have a willingness to learn, and this costs no money. Um, I guess actual money, but it will cost you time. Uh, you're gonna have to invest in yourself. You're gonna have to read a lot. You're gonna have to challenge yourself. At times, it will be tough because there's a lot of new stuff that you'll be learning. But our purpose is to help you. Our purpose is to help anybody. Uh, who comes to our meetings, um, and it usually takes between a year, a year and a half, two years for people to get jobs in actual InfoSec. We're going through a crisis, there's no doubt about it, and it hasn't hit yet. Uh, we're starting to see the layoffs. Uh, we do have a, a channel, a Slack, which is where we all talk, uh, which is the percent dash 27slackcom uh, you can email uh, info at hackmiami.org or rod at hackmiami.info and I would send you an invite. We also have a Discord channel. But the Discord channel invite you will get through joining Slack. So uh, we are still testing the Discord channel. We may move. We, we don't know yet. We have around 500 members right now in Slack and we're going to take this slow until everybody feels comfortable with uh slack we the last time we met we were playing hack the sad i think we placed around 300 we didn't do very well uh but um it was fun uh and some of the challenges were were incredibly difficult uh but that's that's what it is it's, it's about to challenge yourself and try to learn new things a lot of that stuff we didn't even know what to do uh but it was about astrophysics and space and that's what hacking is you challenge yourself and uh, think outside the box. We do have uh, a job offers channel where uh, we am posting everything is coming. Remember when you join that most of us know a lot of people in the industry. So even though there's not a job posted, that doesn't mean I cannot pick up the phone and call somebody and say, hey, it's, 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 do you have anything coming up? And, and it might help you. And it might help you bypass the HR you know, everybody, I found 100,000 people sending resumes. That's, I've, I've been through this in um, the last uh, Great Recession, uh, and it was tough. So hopefully, uh, with the talk that we're going to have today and looking forward, uh, we're going to learn um, how we can, we can, we can cope um, and adapt our skills to, to join an industry that is still hiring. I can tell you right now, they're still uh, calling people, 
left and right. Uh, not too long ago, there was there was a record uh, cyber attack uh, in terms of DDoS. We, we hear about it. I mean, that's that's how it is. With, with that's the thing about cybersecurity. With crisis, the cyber crime goes up. So 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 that's good for us. So uh, the reopening is up and uh, things are coming back. Uh, I will let you guys know when we decide to uh, meet again in person. Uh, we're looking at August. Um, and then again, uh, join the meetup. Uh, check us out on Twitter uh, and check us out in uh, uh, Slack. One more thing. Um, it, uh, it is, uh, I feel like I need to say something about this. Uh, and I didn't want to speak on behalf of, of, of our members. I want, I, I, want, I want our members to, to speak about this. And I'd reach to some of them. Uh, some of them told me they didn't want to say anything. Some others told me uh, they, they will put something together. So we'll see what happens. But I personally like to say that what happened with Mr. Floyd is horrible. Uh, and it, it, it should become them. Uh, and uh, we, we stand in support or, or, of, of the change and equality and justice, um, and 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 uh, we support the the right of people to be heard, and the change for police reform. That's what that's what should happen. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, if you go to this like and you ask about somebody being in a situation that where they were uh, in trouble or they had issues with police, everybody will probably tell you something. So, um, if any of you, because uh, I don't feel like it's speaking on behalf of you. Uh, wants to say something by all means let me know and i will fully support you we have some people on the west coast that they wanted to put something together i supported it and i posted it uh so i leave hack miami to to get a consensus and let me know when you guys are ready uh, i'll be glad to support you and with that in mind today we have hassan johnson hassan is the recent uh recruit uh and i see him in several of our meetings um he's an ex-military um and um he was uh he's gonna tell us about how to break into cybersecurity, and i'm um, um, very much looking forward to this talk so hassan uh we all with no further ado take it away and thank you all right so give, me a second. give me a second uh yep. just another housekeeping while i'm going to make you the presenter but um if you guys are not part of slack dm me with the email address that you want to join slack i will send you the invite Everybody cool with that? All right, give me a second, let me find you again. All right, so you should have the presentation, uh, the pre presenter request, did you get that? So yeah, I got it, I'm ready Perfect. to go. You're all set, thank you very much. Outstanding, thank you. Uh, greetings and salutations, everyone. Uh, Thank you for joining us today at our monthly uh, meetup, Hack Miami. Um, today, I'm going to give a talk on breaking into cyber. Um, I did want to say that uh, I've mentioned in the abstract on the meetup page that I will be discussing the various aspects of launching a career in cybersecurity, rank, uh, ranging from networking to degree versus certifications and much, much more. Uh, so without further ado, I'm not going to hold you. Let's get into it. Awesome. Who am I? Uh, my name is Hassan Johnson. I am a six-year Air Force veteran. Got to do a lot uh, in the military. I want to say that I probably squeezed out 10 or 15 years of, of military experience in the six years that I was in. I got uh, stationed at two different places. Uh, got to deploy, got to serve in our nation's capital. I did a lot in my time in. I always tell people that it was the best decision I ever made. And the second best decision was probably getting out. Uh, but no, in all honesty, it was a wonderful experience that I had uh, in the military. Um, I did want to say, I uh, didn't mean to put a, a disclaimer out there. This meeting was originally going to have two talks, um, but today we're only, only, only going to do one. So I want to say I shouldn't be more than maybe 30 or 45 minutes tops. You know, I definitely want to want this to be an engaging uh, talk, a, a collaborative 
uh, communication. You guys, if you could, please save your questions to the end of the meeting. And of course, I'll open the floor for all questions engagement at the end. Um, also, I am a graduate uh, currently going to Florida International University. I'm a fairly new student there. Uh, got my bachelor's at uh, University of Phoenix, and now I will be attending FIU in the fall. I'm still waiting to see how this all plays out as far as signing up for classes and things of that nature. I'm going to be online, but I still have to figure that whole system out. So my uh, master's is going to be in network engineering, um, or sorry, it's going to be in computer engineering and a focus on the network security side of the house. Um, and lastly, I am a father, an entrepreneur, and I am a cybersecurity analyst. I've held a number of positions uh, in my stint in IT security has been uh, technically it will be two years in July of this year that I've been, I would have been in IT security. I've been in IT uh, for over four years now, but IT security uh, two years in July next month. Um, so I've done everything from a uh, junior security analyst. I've worked in a SOC. Um, I've also, in my last engagement, I was a, a cybersecurity analyst, one of two people for our, our entire organization. So uh, to basically we took care of everything security. Uh, we built out the entire uh, play of how security was gonna look like for our organization. Um, and as a same, shameless plug, uh, I was unfortunately due to the ongoing pandemic i was laid off so i am open to opportunities right now i'm open to relocation i would love if you could you know if you have anything available out there i'm obviously looking on my own but if anyone on this talk uh has any opportunities i'm definitely open uh, my info will be at the end of this uh meeting and i will um have I am in the Hack Miami Slack group, of course. If you can see in the background, I have the Guy Fox uh, picture as my profile picture, um, and my tag is B A uh, Hot Sauce in Hack Miami. It's a long, long story, but anyways, let me continue. So here's what we're going to be talking about today: uh, the purpose of this talk. You know what motivated me to want to give this? I'm going to be talking about breaking into cyber i look at it in two ways you have external uh the things that are outside of yourself that will aid you in getting in the field and advancing once you get in and you have your internal uh things that are inside of yourself things that you have to work on personal development basically uh in order to get into the field and again to uh excel and and move up in the field uh externally i'm going to be talking about give you some stats you know i'm going to be men going over the degree versus cert uh, debate, which is in all of IT, it's a topic that's constantly being discussed. Uh, resume details, you know, a little bit of info on how impactful a good resume is. Uh, projects as well. Um, and then like I mentioned internally, your network, uh, OJT, not just the training you get on your job, but what are you doing at your job, wherever you are, whether you're in cybersecurity now or you want to be, what can you do on your job to train yourself to better position yourself, not only to get into cyber, but on your job as well. So that's kind of what that is uh, about, your drive, your passion, your motivation, uh, intelligence. And that might go without being said, but cybersecurity I've learned uh, definitely takes a plethora of of different perspectives to, you know, become the best asset to your to your company. You know, you have to look at things from all different kinds of angles. Creativity. Um, you have to have the ability. Reverse engineering is not just a, a a way of reversing malware, but it's also a way, even from an IT perspective in general, how to break fix. You know, how to fix problems that you run across. Reverse engineering it, and then I'll close out with a conclusion, uh, some references, and. Uh, resources and questions and of course open the floor up to any of you guys who have questions and you know just again you know I want this to be driven by communication from you all so let's continue I have to make sure I'm clicking in the right place here so again the purpose of this talk my purpose is to serve and deliver as much value as possible to those looking into getting into an exciting field full of potential growth challenges and of course money. 
Um, if you've known me or if you've seen me in person, you know that about me. I'm always, I'm big on serving. I'm big, big on delivering value, especially when it comes to getting into cybersecurity. The field is only gonna get bigger and I'm gonna hit on that in a minute here, but it's only gonna grow. Uh, there's tons of vacancies now. This pandemic didn't help. If anything, it actually, or sorry, this pandemic, uh, yeah, it didn't help um, as far as the amount of vacancies in this field, tons of people being laid off. While at the same time, as Rod mentioned in the beginning, uh, this is a time where you have threat actors that want to uh, take advantage. So the need for this field, for specialists in this field is only gonna get bigger because of that as well. So let's continue. So externally, like I mentioned, uh, there's gonna be things outside of yourself, outside of uh, who you are that you're gonna have to work on in order to really break into this field. Um, and I'll touch on that now. So the stats, this is taken from, and let me back up there, sorry. So this was taken from an article I recently read and I have the link to that article at the end of this slide. Uh, but yeah, they're slated to be from 2013 till 2021 a 350% growth guys, 350% growth in open cybersecurity positions and 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs globally slated by 2021. And what does that mean? So IT, if you're of the school of thought of IT security being in the same field of IT, some may not be, but uh, essentially, IT security is having the biggest amount of growth and unfilled positions than any other uh, field within IT. Uh, any other sector of IT, IT security has the most growth, the most unfilled positions. Um, and so what does that mean with these numbers? You know, obviously the manpower is gonna have to come from somewhere. These positions are gonna uh, hopefully get filled soon, but at the end of the day, it takes a very special set of, of skills to get into this field. And I believe, and this is a little personal prediction of mine with the current pandemic and with uh, remote work growing because of this pandemic, more employers are seeing the value in a remote workforce. So I definitely see a lot of these positions being filled by remote workers, you know, from all across the world. Obviously, as long as you have a good internet connection, a good consistent connection, uh, that is only going to grow um, the remote workforce filling those positions. And excuse me for looking to the side, I have my notes on my other screen here. Um, and again, we kind of briefly touched on this in the beginning of this talk. But uh, essentially there are articles um, out there, talks that are happening of the movement of the workforce from different parts of the country in the United States um, for people to look for you know, less expensive places to live. Again, balance that with the remote uh, capabilities that employers are delving into. Uh, only more of that is gonna happen guys. You know, So I would definitely stay on the lookout for that and constantly prepare yourself for being that person that gets called on when it comes time to fill those positions. And let's continue. So degrees versus certifications. Like I said in the beginning, this is an old adage uh, when it comes to degrees, you know, going to school, getting good grades, uh, graduating and getting a good job. You know, if you are, if you subscribe to that, you know, it's gonna be pretty challenging for you to get into this field or any field for that matter, you know, just going to school and getting grades, you know, you have to do a lot more in order to prove yourself and separate yourself from the pack. So that goes with also uh, being said for certifications, you know, there are those who just, you know, stack tons of certifications. So you can't just all solely focus on degrees. You can't just solely focus on stacking certifications you know, you have to prove your value. Um, one of the things that I learned early on is uh, I have to find ways to separate myself. And I'll get into that a little later here, but definitely prove your value. One of the things that, you know, especially being a veteran myself, that we can take for, uh, for granted is the status that we have as veterans. You know, we get thanked for our service and things of that nature, but that is only a piece 
of who we are as a person, obviously, and that only will take you but so far. The same could be said for a graduate. You know, you, you did definitely work hard. You did definitely stay up late and put in the hours to graduate and get that degree. But what else can you do to separate yourself? That is not enough by itself. And, you know, for those of you who are on this uh, talk right now, who are on this call right now, um, who don't know that yet, you know, be ready for that reality. Once you graduate, you know, there's still more that you will have to do to prove yourself and, and be willing to allow a company to see that value within yourself. You know, you can't assume that your resume and your degree is going to speak for you. You know, you have to be able to speak to your experiences, speak to your, you know, your career so far, even if it's only been internships and part time jobs as a college student, um, you have to be able to speak to that in order for employers to see the value in you. Um, and lastly, I did want to hit on the fact that, you know, what works for me might not work for you. And I'm sure anyone else who's uh, on this call that's experienced can say the same thing. What got them into the field might, nece might not necessarily be the same thing that gets you into the field or will help you move, move into different um, levels within your company or different positions within other companies, you know? Uh, but I definitely wanna use this opportunity as a way of at least giving you some guide to a degree of what can help you. But again, it looks different for everyone else. What worked for me? might be different for you. Um, and don't rest on your laurels, guys. Don't rest on your laurels. Whether you're a veteran, like I said, like myself, um, whether you've you know, been in the field for five, 10 years, uh, whether you're a college graduate student, top, graduated top of your class, don't rest on your laurels. Constantly seek to do more, be better. Um, and I'm gonna hit on that a little later. So, when it comes to getting into the field, when it comes to stepping out and putting a putting a face to a name and getting your name out there, your resume, um, what I want to say is, unless your network is very well established, uh, unless you have your name out there quite a bit, uh, your resume will be your first impression. You know, the saying goes that you only have one time to give a first impression. And you definitely want to pay attention to everything you have on your resume. Take take time uh, to look at all of the different uh, the different things you're putting in there. Don't just list job description. Actually put in your resume job descriptions. Actually put in your resume what you have done. Uh, put yourself in the mindset of a recruiter, of a hiring manager. What can you do for me? Uh, one of the things that I always tell uh, tell guys looking to get into this field and things that have helped me is understand that employers, hiring managers, recruiters are always tuned into WIIFM. What is in it? What's in it for me? What can you do for me? What value can you bring to this organization? Are you going to are you going to be a good investment of my resources to bring you in? So if you have that mindset kind of put it into your resume guys i put it into each and every job description and each and every job that you've done each and every task that you've accomplished project that you're a part of quantify it as much as possible in order to help hiring managers see the value that you can bring you know i want to say that you know maybe there'll be a chance for me later on or anyone else to give a talk on just your resume alone because this can this truly uh can be a a a talk in and of itself just having specific line items in your resume you know you're only going to have but so many seconds honestly of time in front of a hiring manager to have them look at you see what you've accomplished and decide whether you're going to go into the move to the next step pile or you're going to go into the you know not going to happen pile you literally are going to have a few seconds you need to make sure during that time that you feed your hiring managers as much eye candy as you can when it comes to what you've done and learning how to better do that over your career. In uh, my personal experience, I've learned that it helps more than anything to set times to go back into your resume, to set times, whether it's every uh, few weeks or better yet, a few, you know, every month or two, going back in it, updating it, putting new, uh, putting new objects in there as far as projects you've done, as far as tasks that you've accomplished, money that you saved your organization, time, 
that you saved your organization continuously. Your resume is a living document, guys. Your resume is something that you are constantly updating, constantly filling in with new accomplishments, new information. You know, obviously your name, your address, your email, your phone number, obviously those are things that need to be updated, but every accomplishment, every every piece of value that you can give or have given to your organization needs to be constantly updated in your resume so that way when it's you know when an opportunity presents itself or someone is reaching out in their network for the position that you may have wanted you'll have a document that is ready to go you don't have to you know say hey oh wait you know give me a minute to up it'll already be good to go so constantly do that guys um and of course linkedin you see the image i put there linkedin is extremely important as well you know that platform is only going to grow, you know, that is aside from your resume, that is your next, you know, level of impression that hiring managers, recruiters are going to get from you is through your LinkedIn profile. So definitely make sure you're paying attention to that. You're doing your due diligence, updating it, you know, putting relevant information, projects, conferences, all of these things matter. I'll hit on that more later. But that was things that were not necessarily told to me in the beginning. I had to learn it over time. And I hope that, you know, I'm giving you guys enough value so that you can, you know, apply it to your career as well. And again, I'm seeing a few comments here. Uh, definitely want to, again, mention uh, we'll have plenty of time at the end to go into, you know, questions and just talk at the end. But yeah, like I said, LinkedIn, pay special attention to that. Projects, projects, projects. What I wanted to say here um, with projects, definitely find ways, guys, even if you're not in the field yet. Um, what, again, what, have, what worked for me was getting as much experience as I could in projects that were either presented to me or I caught wind of, and I informed my leadership at the time that I could help and this is what I could do. Anything that you can take part in, that you can document what your impact was, what that the outcome of that project was, will help you. Add it to your LinkedIn, add it to your resume, um, add it to your blog site, wherever you can get your name out, wherever someone can find you, click, add it to your YouTube even, uh, you know, talk about it. So that way hiring managers can get a better picture of, okay, this is a serious individual when it comes to this career field. They're not just looking to clock in and clock out every day. They are truly passionate about what we do here, what they do, and they look like a more worthwhile candidate. And this all, and I'll uh, go back over this, but this all goes into separating yourself and standing out, guys. Again, uh, quantify, quantify as much as you can. You know, that's something I'm still learning to this day. Um, when I was in the military, I had to give a lot of uh, different feedbacks and uh, I had to give reports and reviews on the guys who were assigned to me. And part of doing that was quantifying that individual's impact in our team and having that uh, uh, troop understand that they need to do that for themselves so that they can make my job easier. So likewise, guys, when you're working on your resume, when you're working on your LinkedIn, make it easier for the hiring managers and recruiters to find that information out about you. What kind of impact? Not, not, it's not all about just what you did, but how, what impact did what you did have? What percentage of money did you save your company? How much money? How fast, you know, six months faster we got this project finished a year however much time you save the company those are things hiring managers love to see recruiters love to see and i would impress upon you to definitely take note of that if you've not done that yet make that a part make a mental note to continuously do that document everything you've done every project you've taken a part of uh taking part in and add it to you know your resume your linkedin and where people can see you and of course internships you know, um, especially for my college students here and even those who are in between right now, such as myself and those who are looking to make the jump into IT security, look for opportunities to do that as well. Doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be external to your organization if you're currently working right now, possibly look to having 
internship internally to shadow others if you're fortunate enough to be in an organization where you may say, for instance, you're a help desk or you're in some other department, but you have a passion for security and you have a passion for getting into that field, see about what, you, what you can do to shadow others who are in the field, intern underneath them, you know, take some time to learn the ropes, so to speak. And again, that's helping you to get your name out there to show how serious you are about this field, you know, hiring managers from what I've learned, love nothing more than individuals who are passionate about what they're doing, because that gives them the assurity that you're a good asset, that you're, you're a good investment. You're not here just to, you know, make a quick buck or because you hear all these stats and numbers about how big the field is getting, you see uh, individuals, you know, individuals making 100K plus in the field. It takes a lot of passion to get there, guys, and you definitely want to invest that into your field into your career as well as early as possible so like i mentioned that was the external side of things there's the internal what can you do within yourself you know per, uh, personal development think personal development what can you do within yourself to stand out to get you into the field and excuse me if i'm you know talking too fast, you know, I definitely wouldn't mind slowing down. I definitely just want to make the most use of the time that we have together today as humanly possible. And I made a little typo here. Network equals net worth is what I meant to say. So sorry about that. Network equals net worth. So what does that mean? That means that it's not about what you know, it is not about who you know. It's more about who knows you. So the more you get your name out there, the more you're able to present yourself into in front of more people. Um, I would even say doing things like this, you know, a lot of people, um, especially in this field and IT in general, you know, we're, we're uh, kind of to ourselves a lot. Um, and I'm getting a notification of my network connection not being the greatest. So please let me know. Um, Okay, yeah, please let me know if you're having a hard time hearing me or seeing me. I just got a little notification about my network, but I'll just continue if no one has any issues with my connection right now. But as I mentioned, uh, your network is your net worth. So, you know, who you who knows you? You know, what hiring managers know you? What directors know you? What CISOs know you? CIOs, um, founders, you know, get your name out there. Exchange information. And I put here, give value, guys. You know, this might go without being said, but for some of you who are maybe new to the field, um, again, college graduates, or you might not just have ever come across this concept, but when it comes to networking, guys, it's way better when you, uh, it's, all, it's, it's extremely valuable to give value. You know, don't seek to only establish connections with people and to get from them an opportunity for a job, but actually look to see how you can help that individual out. Maybe there's a project they're working on and you might be better at some aspect of that project that they're not good at. Um, we actually were just talking about that uh, when it came to SQL and databases and things of that nature um, for someone who has a has a task that they're working on. You know, maybe you can you know, see in their tweet, uh, Twitter, Twitter, uh, sorry, in their tweet, they might mention they're having some challenges with this part of their project. You know, they might ask questions. You know, I subscribe to, uh, you know, you guys, if you don't already subscribe to channels like Spiceworks or sites like Spiceworks or Hack Miami, of course, and other networking platforms so that you can be a part of the conversation. But again, give value. So that way, it's not only that you're trying to seek out opportunities, but opportunities will seek you out because of the individual you've painted yourself to be by giving value to others. That will only help to grow your next your network exponentially, guys. So definitely, definitely, definitely uh, pay attention to giving value. On the job training. So guys, excuse me back up so yeah on the job training as i mentioned before it's not just about the training you receive for the job you have at hand when i say on the job training and the reason i've made this slide here is so that you guys can understand train not just for the job you have but for the job you want and if it can have any uh 
relativity to what you're doing. If you're help desk, if you're a sysadmin, but you know you have a passion for security, that's what you want to get into. Find ways to incorporate security principles. If you're building out a website, you obviously want to pay attention to the web app, the OWASP, o, o, OWASP top 10. Find ways to secure and harden that site, that web application. Uh, you guys, when you're dealing with databases, you know, even if you're not a database security admin, so to speak, security is in all of our lives, whether you can, whether you see that or not. So find ways to incorporate these things into your daily job. So that way you can, again, stand out, add it to your resume, add it to your LinkedIn, but more importantly, make it a part of who you are. Like always be learning in sales there's always be closing i believe in it and it security especially because of how how many things change how quickly our 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 landscape can change look at this pandemic how many things have happened you know you guys might not be privy right now to a lot of the activity the the ransoms that are happening right now ransomware and things of that nature. But guys, when things like this happen, it's only a matter of time. So you have to always be learning, always open your, your mind to the newest vulnerabilities, like be cognizant of what is happening in the world. You know, one of the things I'm not 100% sure if I put this into another slide, but Reddit's, uh, Reddit forums, and definitely um, I did list it in another slide. So a few sites that you can use, Krebs on security, things of that nature, to stay cognizant of what is happening. You know, find ways to use those tidbits of information, obviously with the appropriate approvals and change management in your current organization. That will go so far, that will take you so far when you do that, you know, incorporate that into your lifestyle, always be learning, always stay ahead of what is happening. Volunteer guys, you know, one of the things that I learned in the military is never volunteer, but that couldn't be further from the truth in IT security to be completely transparent with you all. Find ways to give time, give value in, in the form of on the job training. Like what can you do to stand out and be more of an asset to your current company? So that way you could, again, be noticed, have more to add to your own, like I said, resume and wherever uh, people can find you at. And you can make that a part of your internal, you know, you know, motivation, like always find ways to give value. And of course, document. Again, this is something I had to learn early on. And excuse me, and I used to talk to so much, but this is something I had to learn early on, guys, like document everything that you do and quantify it as best you can. You know, have a notepad, one note, whatever you use to take notes with, document, document, document. So that way there's never an issue with remembering. I never trust my mind or uh, never trust my memory with what I've done. Like this field gives you plenty of opportunities, IT in general, honestly, but IT security especially gives you plenty of opportunities to learn and to take on challenges. So I would be, it would behoove you to write it all down, guys. You know, you guys um, who are already in the field give tons of value every day. You're protecting your infrastructures. You're protecting your companies. You do a lot. And it would only make sense that you document it all and quantify it as best you can. All righty. Moving on, drive. So again, internal. These are the things, these are the concepts that you need to have within yourself again to break into the field so your drive is huge your motivation why do you want to get into this field uh for me guys the reason i wanted to get in it took a long time i'm going to be completely honest with you it took a long time for me to understand and know you know as i'm sure it is with you with uh, a lot of you here what i wanted to do in life i knew i wanted to work with computers but i didn't know exactly how i came out of high school computer engineering looked amazing the math did not so i quickly turned away from computer engineering all the way up until i got out of the military Cybersecurity started becoming bigger and bigger i got out back in 2013 uh, more and more schools started incorporating cybersecurity programs and you know certifications and just the job market in general started expanding with more and more cybersecurity roles. And I realized, hey, you know, I see all these hacker movies, uh, Mr. Robot and different things of that nature. You know, I would love to be in a position to help protect companies and their assets to learn of all the skills that are needed to do that. So that's what motivated me to be able to give back 
And like I said, my thing is I love I love to deliver value. I love to give. So in order to do that from an IT security perspective, I wanted to give back in the form of helping organizations protect themselves. Your belief system matters as well, guys. So what do you believe? Do you believe you can be successful in this field? You have to have that core belief within you. You know, there's tons of people who have a lot more experience. You see these guys who, you know, get bug bounties for 100K. I think I saw an article recently for Apple uh, where someone got a 100K bug bounty. You think, man, I can never do that. It just seems like it's so it's so big of a thing to do. But everybody starts from somewhere, guys. And you have to believe within yourself that you can do that as well if that's what you aim to be. You might want to be a CISO. You might want to be a senior director of security. You might want to found your own company. You have to believe in within yourself that you can do that. Um, and of course, independent education, as I mentioned uh, a slide ago, Find ways to keep yourself engaged in what is happening. Learning, always be learning. Keep yourself engaged with the conversation of cybersecurity. Hacker news, um, as I mentioned before, uh, staying a part of Reddit um, conversations that are happening over there concerning IT security, ransomware, malware, you know, what are the newest APTs, advanced persistent threats that are out there, you know, stay cognizant of it, guys. That's what helps me and what I what has helped others that I have learned from mentors of mine, they're always learning. The most successful people I've seen in this field are those who are always, so to speak, having their ear to the street of what is happening in cybersecurity. Krebs on security and Naked Security are another uh, two other platforms that will help you to stay informed and stay abreast of what is happening. So that definitely. Um, is a part of your drive. And I did want to give a quick little story, um, a counterpart of mine, a former counterpart of mine, I would say his drive is beyond crazy. Like within, I would say four to five years, uh, he went from having no background in IT security at all to now being a senior threat hunter at his organization. He went from, I believe, and you know, not to put his business out there, I don't know exactly, but I want to say probably 40, 50K a year. Now he's making well over 100K in the last four to five years because of his drive. He went from no certifications. Uh, he went and got his two Red Hat certifications. He worked with Splunk, which is another amazing tool to get experience in if you don't already have it. Um, he has a Security Plus. OSCE, or I'm sorry, OSCP and OSCE certifications. And he also uh, just stays abreast. He has a GitHub page, you know, so that's an, uh, an example, like I mentioned, of an individual who has that drive. So again, you want to separate yourself. You want to always be learning. That will only help you, not hurt you in getting in this field and excelling in this field, guys. So always, always look for ways to continue your independent education. Continuing on here. So this might go without saying, um, but your intelligence, guys, you know, when you get into IT, IT security, especially, you really have to tap in to how you look at a problem. You know, when you are presented with an issue, when you're presented with an alert, when you're presented with an APT, malware, something you've never seen out in the wild before, you have to find ways to break that problem down to understand how did it happen to who, what, who, what, when, where, and why to that problem. You know, and again, this might go without being said, but you really, you know, this is not a field for those who are just going to have a constant mindset of, you know, day in, day out, clock in, go home, you know, make a, make your paycheck and go home. Like you really have to invest in yourself and use your intellect to break down the problems that you're presented with. You know, reverse engineering is not just a phrase used with malware, guys. You know, you have to be able to take a problem and work backwards from it, um, especially for you guys who are in IT, uh, who work help desk, you're presented with issues every day. You obviously will get used to certain issues happening all the time, but there comes a time where you're presented with something you've never seen before, and you have to what? Reverse engineer it. You have to work backwards in order to break it down and, and come to a solution. So that all dials into being creative. Your creativity is beyond, beyond your education, beyond your network, 
how you break down a problem is extremely important, guys. So your creativity, can you look at this from a different perspective? You know, one of the things I love about our field is how broad it can be. You have guys who are guys and girls who are in social engineering, like that is their forte, has nothing to do with the best scenes and uh, source solutions and programs and malware defender, has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with being creative talking to an individual to draw draw out information from them in order to so to speak hack into their environment so creativity from all aspects of this field will definitely benefit you and of course being a problem solver you cannot give up one of the things i love about offensive of security i mentioned two of their certs already the osce and the oscp their phrase is try harder guys be a problem solver, never give up. CTFs might be your best friend if you're looking to get into this field, if you're looking to get into this field, because they push you to do that. They push you to learn. They push you to grab onto new technologies and new just things that you've never known about before. For me, that's what it, that's what it does for me. I never knew, I never really deep dove into steganography until I started working on CTFs that required me to do that. You know what I'm saying? So you definitely have to have being a problem solver, a part of your DNA to both get in and excel in this field. Um, and with that being said, here is my last bit of information I wanna pass on. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Again, this may be something that goes without being said, but you definitely wanna be disciplined when it comes to this field, guys. You wanna be able to put your head down when it comes to these certifications, when it comes to your, your degrees, your, your knowledge, your independent education, you have to be disciplined enough to, to, to learn it and to grow from it and to apply it to what you do day in and day out. You know, I can't stress, enough like one of my favorite sayings is the pain of discipline is far less than the pain of regret and i say that because um and i wanted to mention this a little earlier but if you are serious about getting into it security guys if you're serious about getting into cyber security you want to you want to break into this field find a way to do it as soon as possible because there's a lot to learn there's a lot to gain there's a lot of growth that will happen in this field but it will but if you're serious about it it would only behoove you to find ways if you are at a current if you currently at a company that has roles or you might have the ability to pitch that to a director or cio or ceo of your company of creating that role for your organization guys so find ways you know to get in that's one of my biggest regrets that i didn't get into this field sooner without realizing that i didn't have to know so much one of the you know, and me and Rod, you know, you can point to this as well. We spoke about this briefly for a SOC analyst role. It does not take much, guys. You know, having some understanding of how networks work, how exploits work, you know, having that minor knowledge will take you so far in this field. But it's, it doesn't take much to get into a role like that. If I could have done that as soon as I got out of the military, I would have, you know, took in that uh, SOC analyst role and grew from there. I would have probably been leaps and bounds further than where I'm at now. But everything happens for a reason. I do not um you know look to my experiences in a bad way everything got me to where i'm at now and i'm happy that i am where i'm at and i want to help you guys do and get to the same place you know grind have that discipline and find ways to to if you're not already in it security find ways to make it a part of your job be more secure and pitch that to your your leadership and the last thing i wanted to say here guys is stand out find ways to attract attention to yourself as i mentioned before it's not about what you know and it's not so much about who you know but it's about who knows you find a way to stand out get you a github if you can get you a, your own personal website your own personal blog youtube you know the list goes on of ways not just your linkedin profile and your resume i've seen too many guys get passed up guys and girls get passed up who would have been the perfect candidate for certain positions, but because not enough people knew them and because they didn't put themselves out there enough, they didn't get that notice, you know what I'm saying? So definitely find ways to stand out, to show value, have it already set to go in your resume and in your LinkedIn and branch out to, like I said, GitHub and your own personal blogs and detail what experiences you've had, talk about your experiences, even if you don't have technical 
uh, things that you can put out into the field, at least talk about it. I found that you can draw, a lot of value can be drawn out just of explaining and putting it out there what you have done. So if anything, at least do that, you know, vlog, like I mentioned, get on YouTube and, you know, start a channel just talking about your cybersecurity journey, your infosec journey, your IT journey, or your journey to get into it and have people, you know, drawn to that and, and create content around that, guys. So uh, without further ado, uh, that's pretty much the end of it. Like I said, I'm going to open the floor up here to any conversation, any discussions. I think I, there was a question or two that I saw mentioned from Amy. Um, before I a answer that question, I'll give Rod and uh, um, uh, anyone else who might have wanted to throw something in there before I get into the questions. But, you know, that's it, guys. Again, at the end of this slide, I'll have uh, my name tag there. My LinkedIn will be there. Like I said, I'm open to opportunities. I'm open to relocation. I'm definitely looking for my next opportunity. I look forward to it. And yeah, if you have anything, Rod, um, to say before I answer questions or we answer questions, uh, I'll let you go ahead and take the floor. Well, thank you very much. It was an amazing talk. I, I wholeheartedly agree with everything you said. You said, uh, you couldn't have said it better. Uh, you, I, I suggest people that came late, uh, we are gonna post this so you can you can uh, watch it again and please listen to some to all the things that he says because he he nailed it on the head. Um, th that's what you need to do. Um, when I when I was trying to break an infosec, it took me around three years. It was not easy. It was not easy. Uh, I had to finance my own training uh, because that's the uh, I guess the irony of it, you know, you get all these profiles and they want all these certs that only corporations can pay. And they want all this um, experience that only at the job you can have. So the way I went around it is I did what Hassan just said. I started going to Hack Miami. I play every single CDF I could. Um, I ended up winning the Black Hat CDF in 2012, and that's what actually got me into the, the industry. I remember I was interviewing with the CEO of, uh, with the president, sorry, of Prolexic, and he, he told me, if you can win the Black Hat CDF, you can do the job here. And that's how I started. Uh, and when, when I was trying to, to, to get an infosec, I remember standing and sending resumes and I never heard from anybody. And that's something that I, that I want to point out here. Your best bet, and usually the recruiting happens with who you know. Um, and HR may, may not be your friend. <laughs> Sorry to say this. Uh, it's usually better to meet the, the hiring manager. Uh, it's usually better to, uh, to have somebody introduce you. So joining clubs joining associations, things like the ISSA, uh, the IC Square, uh, your, your, your hackerspace meetups, your college uh, association uh, with um, uh, companies or people in the industry, just a better way to network yourself. Uh, I, have, I can tell you an example. Uh, uh, when I hired Greg Linder, uh, Greg Linder was a, an ex-military and uh, the, what I like from him is that when I saw him play my capture the flags, he was he did pretty good. And uh, um, Greg learned to hack because uh, he had to crack video games in order to play them because you couldn't afford it, right? So I thought that was amazing. Uh, and I saw him on my CTFs, I saw him winning. And I remember I told my boss at the time, I said, listen, you, you please hire this guy, right? Like, I don't care. You know, I, I, I'll take the blame if, if he fails. I knew he wasn't going to. I, I just saw his passion and I saw how smart he was. He didn't have a bachelor's degree. He didn't have anything. And I said, I want you to hire this guy. He's now one of the top reverse engineers in the industry. And, and that's how uh, a lot of people in InfoSec teams that are successful hire. They hire skills, not degrees. I know... That with the crisis, you know, they may get, again, with the stupidity, you have to have an MBA and blah, blah, blah. Listen, I almost got fired for hiring a PhD. And since then, I learned that before I, I hire anybody, I will have them do something technical because you never know. You get all these letters and things and you, that doesn't tell me anything. Now, if you show me a resume where you want to definitely you play 
or you play, um, I don't know, hack to start, or you play in many places, that tells me, oh, there is, there's a willingness here to, to learn new things. There's a willingness here to, to think outside the box. And again, uh, come to the meetings, meet people, and, and that's usually how things happen. Uh, one more thing before I, I pass it around. Do not fall for the trap of, I had to pay all this money in order to get into the industry. That's not true. Uh, during the, uh, the Great Recession, I remember, and that tells obviously, this is my age. Um, back then, you know, being an MCSC was a big deal. I don't know if some of you even know what NCSE is, is, but this is like a Microsoft certified systems engineer, right? Yeah. So, so there was this huge scam where you had to basically get in debt, you had to get a loan, pay fifty thousand dollars, and they will tell you they will guarantee you a job after you finish six, eight months. Don't fall for that, guys. Don't don't go, don't fall for these schools that said, Oh, if you pay us two thousand, three thousand, whatever, you're gonna be ready to go and you're gonna get a job. That's not true. You got a higher chance of getting a job, going to hack Miami, than paying all that money that you probably don't have and that nobody has if they're unemployed, hoping that there's somebody that, that, that some, somehow they're gonna pay attention to you. So please don't fall for that. It's it's a scam. And with that, I don't know, Daniel, if you wanna say something. Yeah, I was going to answer the question because it was posted a little while back, uh, Rod, from this individual named Amy. I see the chat. Oh, yeah, go for uh, it. I see in the chat. Uh, uh, Amy, I'm not sure if you were going to unmute yourself, but I was going to respond just because you asked already. Um, okay, so, hi. Hi, yeah. So I see you asked, uh, can you give examples of what projects have worked for you? I've heard of colleagues having their personal projects dismissed in interviews because they didn't encompass enterprise and or prod environment experience any advice so to be honest and rod and uh Mr. gizmo i'm not sure if you want me to use your real name but um yeah it definitely depends it depends it depends on what opportunity you're looking at and what projects you're using to kind of sort of defend why you're the best candidate for that position so for instance if you work if you're looking to work in a sock and you've kind of sort of set up a similar environment at home and you might want to take note and again I'm not sure if this is your what you're looking to get into but um, Splunk like I mentioned earlier look into that language uh, look into that software uh, the Helk H-E-L-K uh, which I believe is Hadoop and Elk stack a lot of you guys might know what that is looking to that uh, but basically Try to find if you're going to use a project for any opportunity you're looking into. Obviously, you want to make, you want to fine tune uh, that project for that opportunity. For a SOC analyst, it'll be certain projects. For if you're looking to get into application security, what WAFs have you worked on? Uh, what databases have you secured? You know what I'm saying. So make sure the project. So again, it, it really depends on what projects you're using to defend your your value. Um, but I would say start there, you know, just open yourself up again uh, for me personally, and I don't want to tangent too far, but me personally, um, it took a while for me to know what I wanted to do in IT security. I'm still figuring it out as I go along, but try to find that so that way you can work on things that have value to that field. Again, if you're looking to get into red teaming, blue teaming, SOC analyst, um, uh, uh, pen testing, web application security, find projects that have to do with those things and then use those projects. Cause I've, I've honestly, I have not heard personally, Amy, of uh, individuals getting their projects, especially if the hiring manager, and let me say this too, I'm sure Rod can attest to this as well. The, if the hiring manager is not, does not have an IT security background, I wouldn't, I could care, if they dismiss my project, I could care less, like that's on them because they don't understand enough about what we do anyways. They're looking for other things, but, if that person, that individual does, then they will appreciate it that much more. So make sure you're aware of what perspective, so to speak, that they're coming from. I hope that makes sense, Amy. Right, I, I, right. I, I find that a little odd because if you, if you are a person that you were able to download Splunk, for example, and uh, you were able to, to, to learn how to ingest sources, to look for uh, for uh, uh, learn analytics in traffic, for example, or see uh, logs from from Apache or from Windows, uh, even though it's not at the enterprise level, it is very valuable. And in my opinion, it will put it will put you above 
or somebody had, that hasn't that hasn't done that at all. So don't be discouraged by that. Um, just try to make sure, however, though, and this is usually one of the things that I tell people. You had to, I know at first it's hard because you really don't know what your forte is and you don't know what really you're going to like. Some people like to be behind racks uh, with hoodies and air conditioner and they never talk to anybody uh, and that's their passion, right? So these are people that are, you know, keyword rats, they're, they're typing commands all night and it's all about firewalls and that's tech ops, for example. I hate tech ops. Like if you if you put me to configure firewalls, I'll say, hey, I know what to do, but I don't want to do this for a living. Some right. other people are passionate about pen testing, for example. They love to break into a web app. Some others are in binaries. You there's one thing about infosec you need to know, and that's one of the things that I push on my CDFs. You can't know everything. Mm -hmm. You cannot know everything. At one point, you're gonna have to choose something and specialize on it. You, you may want to know, I think, here and there, but you're not going to be, and this is usually one of the things that I see when they're hiring. They want they want uh, 10 years of reversing, 10 years of web app. I told, I told some recruiters, they started like four careers together. This is impossible. So don't fall for that. Uh, try to, to, to prepare yourself the best you can and uh, uh, do your effort. Don't be discouraged. So um, do you guys mind if I add something? Because uh, you guys know that I'm not actually in the cybersecurity industry, but um, I, uh, I have my own company. So I'd like to give you a perspective from um, a company owner or a hiring person. So um, some of it may not be as, um, the feedback may not be as accurate as you should think. So uh, if somebody goes on an interview and they come back and they tell you, oh my God, they dismissed my personal project. That may not be why it was dismissed. It may be that they just had a bad interview and they thought that was the reason they didn't get it. So take all of that with a grain of salt because when you are interviewing and hiring people, um, you're looking at the soft skills as well, right? So you can be the most brilliant person on the planet. You can be the best pen, pen tester on the planet. But if I don't think you're going to meld with my team, you're not getting the job. Right. So y'all need to also I'm sorry, I'm getting on my soapbox now. Y'all need to also work on your soft skills, work on your interpersonal skills, because I know it sucks because I came up in the ranks. I had all the certifications, your MCS, the you talked about the MCSE. I did all that study on my own, took the test on my own. So out of pocket was just the testing fees. Um, but yeah, it took me six months to get all of those things like what, eight certifications. Oh, my God, it was you know, $15,000 for the classes. I didn't have that as a single mom, so I did it all on my own. Um, but I wasn't getting the jobs, and it was because I didn't have the interpersonal skills. I had all the certifications. I knew how to do, you know, network architect like you wouldn't believe, um, but <clears throat> I was not a nice person to be around at the time. I'm a little nicer now, obviously, you guys that know me, but um, yeah, work on your personal skills. That is, I'm going to tell you, uh, from my perspective, that's more than 50% of getting the job. It's great that you know your business, master your skills, but if you don't have the interpersonal skills, I don't want you in my office. I don't want you on my team because you're just going to be a cowboy, badass, narcissist that thinks that the world can't run without you. And that's not the truth because I can find 10 others with your same experience that can actually get along with other people. That's so, what I call the, the brilliant jerks. I don't I'll, get off my, I'll get off my uh, soapbox now. So, Amy, that may not be the reason they didn't get that job. Yeah, I was just, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, piggyback on that real quick. Soft skills, oh my goodness, they're everything. I feel like, uh, I know this talk could have probably gone even longer if we were to deep dive some of those, some of the topics I presented, but soft skills, I've found, and this is to Amy and anyone else on this talk right now, the majority of positions, are, I mean, I, I, honestly, I'll say all the positions I've ever had, my soft skills probably mattered just a little bit, a lot more, a lot more, more. than my they technical, more. because yeah. you, and this is even coming from a military, my background in the military, morale is everything. Like you can push production down so far if you are, negative if you're not producing a positive helping to produce a positive envi environment so mm -hmm. you know that will definitely take you far in this field as well um i can't remember the saying but i know you can anybody just about can be trained in just about anything but you can't train a good attitude you can't you know you can't teach that you know what i'm saying so that is part of that internal what's a part of you 
uh, that you need to work on. And I'm not saying to sit here and, you know, kiss butt or anything like that. Don't be fake about it. Be real, be real genuine about wanting to be a part of a positive environment and adding positivity to it. Soft skills are so important. And I wanted to mention, uh, Rod, you, you, you talked about something. I was going to just say this real quick. Stan, uh, when it comes to this market now that we're in, it is uh, it is what it is, but it is definitely an employer's market right now. You know, so many people have been laid off. I mean, if you're local to South Florida, you heard about uh, what is that company's name? Uh, the three, the a a r a v a r v r company. Magically, magically, oh, ma magically. That's the one. So just think about a company like that dropping so many uniquely skilled people. This is at this point in time is definitely and a lot of companies doing the same thing. This is an employer's marketplace. So definitely, again, stand out, find ways, do projects. Um, and I don't know if uh, you guys saw Rod or uh, Ms. Gizmo saw the other comment. I saw something about uh, what platform would you recommend from Alex? And again, guys, you can unmute yourselves. Um, and if, and you, if you like, yeah, ask the question. Uh, for all of us to hear, but I, I just was going to hit on it real quickly here. You said, what platform, Alex Chess, what platform would you recommend to start a personal blog to put personal projects, manuals? Um, it really, again, that's one of those, it depends. Um, I have I haven't seen a bad re uh, response come from using something like WordPress for your own personal blog and GitHub for your own personal projects. I'm not a, a programming guy at all by any means. You know, I'm not, I'm, I need to learn more, uh, uh, get my Python skills and, and Linux skills when it comes to um, that, that, that language. But uh, I've seen a lot of individuals have success with that. I've even come across the actual individual I named who I, who I was giving an example of when it comes to Drive. He interviewed where they actually wanted to look at his GitHub, like they were that serious about those that that skill set. So use that platform to help get your projects out there. And again, like I mentioned, uh, WordPress and you guys, Rod or, or Ms. Gizmo, you can definitely, you know, throw in chime in on yeah, that I if think, you like. I, I think I I think it sometimes these things go by I like fads. You know, like mm -hmm. a blogger was big at one point. Uh, right now, I can tell you that uh, there, even if you put like papers or projects in GitHub, it's almost like a they look for it. They, they will ask you, "Hey, what's your GitHub?" So, uh, GitHub is one and, and Medium. For some reason, people are doing Medium now nowadays. I love Medium, not for some reason, for a specific reason. I love it. Well, they charge though. <laughs> they do. They do. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not in the charge thing. <laughs> You can host a hub, by the way, you can host a blog in GitHub. You have to mm -hmm. code it, but you can. And it looks pretty cool. And that and that will impress me if you if you come with a resume that's posted on a blog in GitHub. That's true. Yeah. I see another question real quickly I was gonna hit on from Alex, his second two part question. Bug bounties versus CTS. Where where can I where I can better put my effort? Uh for that kind of question, I mean, those are two different worlds almost. I mean, you can get better at bug bounties by doing CTFs and vice versa. I mean, you really, when it comes to bug bounties, you know, that's where you make money helping, you know, for those who are on this call or on this talk who don't know a bug bounty, um, and this is just a real dirty way of explaining it, but it's basically where you help companies better protect themselves and make money for, you know, different companies, Microsoft, Google's and, and smaller companies will put out challenges for people and put a price on it for uh, fixing that that bug. Um, as far as your, your efforts, um, I honestly would say both, you know, like if you have time, depending on your availability, work on both CTFs. I personally like CTFs because of the collaboration because of the environment that it puts me in around a lot of other people, especially obviously when we meet in person online is different, but such as the South Florida ISSA uh, um, hack the flag that we've had um, at FIU for the past few years. Uh, those types of environments, I love being around others who are doing this challenge and, and learning and growing and networking. You know, any environment you could put yourself in to get around others who are in the field, 
go for it. Bug bounties are a little bit more exclusive where it's mainly you and your computer and you you might reach out to a few people here and there to get help, but that's really like something that you're doing for yourself. So I would probably say, like I said, do both. Um, and it really depends on where you're trying to go and what you're trying to do. But CTFs, I would definitely, if you can do an in-person CTF or a CTF where a lot of people are going to be involved uh, at that time, I would definitely harp on, on that. Uh, but you can't go wrong with either one. I'm going to oh, mute myself for this one. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, go. You, you. No, go ahead, Amy. I was just saying well said. I was just getting right behind him. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I was just going to ask uh, for some advice, uh, maybe culling through all of, I guess, the myriad of fields. Um, I mean, I get try things, right? Go to CTFs. Just went to my first recently, did pretty well. Um, <laughs> so, um, but uh, beyond that, like, is there anything else you can think of that's maybe less traditional advice? I don't know. Um, it, uh, less traditional advice, uh, as Rod said, in my experience, you know, uh, joining uh, the Hack Miami group, uh, I know that uh, a lot of people that join, they'll come in, they're nervous, um, and they're very shy, they won't speak during their first meeting or two meetings or whatever, um, but then I always like try to get some feedback, what did you think or whatever, and most of the time they just like completely go, um, you know, they're like, these are my people. I finally found my people. They finally found their tribe where they fit in. And as Rod said, you spend a year, a year and a half, two years in the Hack Miami group with uh, the presentations that we give, the education that we give. Um, and I also have to promote the um, uh, the SF ISSA because I'm on the board of that as well. Um, but uh, the education that you get there, knowing the people and knowing who's there and then getting the industry information of who's hiring and what skills. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks or a month or so ago, we had a, a thing on Splunk. So I know Steven's asking about Splunk, right? He's saying, oh, because he didn't have Splunk, maybe I read it incorrectly, I'm perusing. Um, you know, but we, you get those things. So, you know, we have sessions on Splunk. We have sessions on the higher end things. You know, Rod does, uh, you know, the basic pen testing 101. He does Minisploit. Um, you get all of that when you um, join these meetings and get this education. Um, and then just person after person is like, oh, I got a job at Akamai. I got a job in this SOC. I got a job as, you know, a security analyst here. Um, and it, you, you can't deny that much success. Uh, but the personal skills, the interpersonal soft skills, I'm all about that. So. Yeah, I was just going to get back oh. on. Oh, so sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, I was going to say that was such a good plug for your own, for this club. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, thank you. That was, that was great. It is absolutely true. <laughs> oh, Rod, you were saying something? I'm sorry. Yeah, the person, uh, Steve, uh, Stephen is saying that it's hard. It is hard. It's not easy. It is not easy. And I, I, I see you, you put a lot of effort. My question to you is, do you want to stay in Florida? Because some of the things that you put in there, it's going to be very hard to find somebody here in Florida. You may have to relocate. You look to me like, like you, you will be great at, at AWS or a Facebook or a Google. We have people at AWS. I can I can introduce you to them, and uh, but you're gonna have to move. They don't they don't budge. You you have to go to Seattle. Uh, so um, you have to consider that uh, it, it's very hard uh, uh, in Florida. The industry is very small. Uh, yeah, that's I was, why I always tell you guys that the, the Hack Miami is a big team of its own success. Once you get into this industry, you leave. You may, maybe you stay your first or second year, but once you start getting senior, there's not much of industry here. Uh, some people were gets to work remote and come back, but some others, for the most part, I promise you, you you're gonna have to relocate. Uh, so. Um, consider that. Consider opening your your horizons because it's not easy. It's not easy. It's uh, it's, it's a very small and not even worse with all the layoffs. Uh, that company that we just mentioned that was one of the biggest companies uh, here. Other than that, you have Citrix and uh, there are a few others, but there's there's not much here. Well, according to uh, Zuckerberg's interview on CNBC last week, whenever it was, apparently he invented work from home. So. <laughs> of course he did. 
No, yeah. I was just going to mention. I um, was watching that. He's like, we're all about the work from home. It's expanded our industry. And now we can get individuals all over and all this different talent. And I'm like, oh, dear God, you're killing me right now. I've been working from home for 20 years. Exactly. I think he exactly. said that they're going to go half of them. Uh, like half of the workforce is going to be remote. Yeah. Then maybe they should stop building the buildings around Facebook because I go there where I used to and they keep building. They have their own hotel. They have everything around them. So it doesn't look like uh, that they're going to go work from home. Right. Yeah, I was going to mention too uh, with that question that Steve, Stephen, I've, I've seen that quite a bit. You know, you have all the qualifications. It should be nothing for you to get into a good position. But my two cents, your network, like I mentioned a few slides back, is everything. Like I've literally gotten positions almost strictly based off of who knew me, um, off of my network, off of knowing the right people at the right time. And I'm not someone who has even half of what you have, to be uh, completely frank with you. But I was fortunate enough to be in a position where because someone saw the passion that I had and knew that I wanted to stick and stay in this field, I was recommended for the position. Like I literally, um, one of the best positions I had, and I'm kind of sad um, that I, I'm not still there because it was an amazing opportunity, but one of the co-founders actually of SFISSA South Florida, who's a CIO now, um, actually interviewed me and I got a position because of someone in his network, again, that knew me and he saw that we had a connection on LinkedIn. So. That would be outside of the your own self-education, outside of the certifications and degrees you have, uh, uh, bro, um, tap into your network. Like Hack Miami to me was like a blessing in disguise. It was actually something that was introduced to me going to Nova. Um, one of the individuals that I went to school with knew about Hack Miami um, and in, uh, invited me out to a meeting. And from there, it's just been it's been curtains. You know, I've been able to network with the right people, uh, get to kind of get more clear vision on what I, what I wanted to do in the field, where I wanted to go. Um, but again, Rod is right. You know, you definitely if you're not getting remote opportunities coming to you, uh, you're probably going to have to look to move, uh, expand your horizons, uh, open yourself up to relocation. Um, but definitely, your network is so valuable, man. I'm, and uh, I might be preaching to the choir. You may already know this, but Again, this market right right now is not the easiest to move around in, but definitely um, reach out. One of the keys I'll, 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 I'll mention when it comes to networking, yo, is uh, if you see a company, and this is like a little hack, so to speak, uh, if you see a company that you want to work for on LinkedIn, you see individuals who work for that company, pull their ear a little bit, you know, like put a, drop a little information in their ear like, hey, uh, sir, ma'am, or whatever their name is, you know, I see you work here. I'm very interested in the positions you guys currently have or may have in the future. You know, like I mentioned before, give value, find ways if they're working on a project, if they got something going on, find ways to give value if you can. But if not at that time, you can't find ways to give value, uh, pull their ear a little bit. Like, see, look them up on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is amazing for this. You can see someone who works for Microsoft. You can see someone who works for Google, Amazon reach out to them, like type in security on Amazon in LinkedIn, and it'll show you security en engineers, architects, so forth and so on, reach out to them. And it doesn't hurt to try, you know, just get again, it's about who knows you, who's getting eyes, because what it sounds like to me, uh, Stephen, what I'm from what I'm seeing, is just that you don't have enough eyes yet. Again, the market, whatever's happening is happening, but you don't seem to have enough eyes on you because it shouldn't it really, like with that amount of experience and certifications and stuff like that, man, it really shouldn't be hard to get your get, get your first opportunity in security, but try that out, yo. I would definitely suggest trying that out. Go on LinkedIn, go to a company that you want to work for, FireEye even, whatever company it is, um, and, and try to reach out to one of their, uh, they're even the director, CIO, you know, CEO, it doesn't hurt, you know, and, and let them know that you're very interested. Um, and that's another part of the whole setting yourself apart, standing out that I mentioned earlier on. And I'm seeing questions. You guys, again, uh, please don't hesitate. I'm going to mute myself now, but please don't hesitate to unmute yourself and ask. I'm going to start <clears throat> scrolling through right now, but that's my take on that. Okay. okay. And then oh. um, go ahead, Amy, ask your question. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just got an offer. Not sorry. I just got a recommendation for um, from a professor uh, for an AWS internship. Um, and I guess I was just wondering 
should I somehow get an offer? Some miracle happens. <laughs> um, what should I do to, I mean, I don't know, how, how can I best advance my career from that point? I, I, having, I, mind you, just starting, right? That's broad all the way. The, the best way to, to, to leverage on that is if you're going to AWS, uh, and this is, I guess, the, the technical part, is take, take their free trainings. So that way it will help you when you go in, you, you, you're you not starting from scratch. So things like that uh, may help you. They definitely have, uh, there's plenty of free training from them. So I will take it and prepare myself for it. Uh, same things, they, things such as uh, if you're doing security, always don't then, uh, if you're doing networking, TCP IP, TCP IP, everybody must know TCP IP. You have to learn, this is the classic question they're gonna ask you what the OSI layers are, the seven OSI layers. It's usually a, a classic question. Um, and then Linux, Linux is important or Linux. I, I don't care what Microsoft says. You had to learn Linux, learn Linux. Uh, force yourself to learn Linux get yourself a, a Linux computer, use it every day. Oh, uh, I, I'm already there. <laughs> okay, awesome. Then then, there, then, then, this is going to be great for you because if you have to do a lot like a terminal work, you already know what to do. Yeah, I, okay. I guess like my question was more toward like um, how, uh, okay, how would I, I don't know, I guess if, if they hire internally, like that might be something that, that you know about, right? How would I go about being a more attractive candidate? I don't know, man. Oh, oh uh, <laughs> yeah, that's an excellent question. That is a perfect way to, yeah, to phrase that question. question, by the way. I can tell you when, when we were at Akamai, for example, or, or, or at Splunk, uh, you don't choose lightly the internship. Usually internships are seen as a way to, to hire somebody that has a lot of potential and would not cost us thousands of dollars by a recruiter. Or uh, we'll have to have our own recruiters, uh, you know, scavenging and looking for people. So internships are a way to, to, to acquire talent. Do your best. Do your best. But again, you know, uh, like Hassan, Hassan said something that is very important. Uh, your intelligence your your personal relationships um and sometimes and, and this is something you will see in your career it's not your fault you are among people that you may not click with you you you're among people that you know may not like you uh that doesn't mean you're bad or or less it's simply not the right place for you so you also have to look at it the uh, the same way is this a place you want to stay is this a place you want to you, you see yourself of course, if you need it, all of us had to suck it up at one point, right? But but don't abandon your passion. I wanted to. I don't know if Stephen is still on the call or not. Uh, no, shoot, Stephen, I, I know. Stephen had to If a anyone, out. okay, if anyone um, has this information, I I know someone at Deep Watch actually. I used to, I used to work for him at UDT. So I'm not sure what his handle is on Slack. But if anyone yeah. on the call can please connect me with him. I would definitely love to, like I said, I, I'm, I'm all about giving value. So I, I would love to connect those two guys. Deep Watch, and this is to Rod's point, is actually one of the one of the few companies that I know of that is almost 100% remote. So that might be the perfect opportunity for him. So if he's good with Splunk, I think I mentioned him saying, say, uh, mentioned him saying that because I did recently check out Deep Watch's uh, careers page and that was like the only position they have posted was like a Splunk engineer or something like that. So if he's got that experience, um, anyone on this call, please reach out to me. Um, Rod, Ms. Gizmo, please let me know. And um, I'll definitely connect them um, to each other because yeah, I actually do work. I used to work with somebody who, um, yeah, was that, is, is currently at Deep Watch right now. Um, also, I wanted to mention, uh, Sam also put in here, uh, if you're a student, consider uh, awseducate.com. Um, and uh, from what I understand, it's a pretty good resource. Sam can uh, speak more to it. Or if you have some specific questions, maybe Sam can answer them for you. 
Uh, but I did want to throw that out there because that is a good resource. Also in our Slack, uh, there's various channels that are available. Uh, so as Rod mentioned, there is the um, jobs uh, one, but there's also training and education, social engineering. Um, there's a lockpick village and a pie village as well, but uh, you know, there's job offers and uh, the training. People will post the most amazing, you know, free training or this is free for a day or um, I helped get my certification with this kind of training, just like Sam Samuel's posted about the AWS Educate. Um, you can't buy that kind of help, trust me. Thanks. Just wanted to say that to everyone. <laughs> Not a problem. Amy, I did want to, because I'm trying to scroll back through the chat. I think I mentioned, or you mentioned something about, you know, what do you do about those job postings that ask for so many years of experience? Um, guys, if you are looking at the slideshow right now, the second resource that I put there, um, some of you might be familiar with this gentleman. His name is the the Cyber Mentor, or he uh, also founded a company called VetSec. Um, in that video in particular, he kind of gives details into his journey. Amy, um, this is very specific. If you go to the five minute mark in that video, he actually talks exactly about that. When you see job descriptions, I've learned this, it took so long because there's so many opportunities that I passed up by simply not applying the worst thing the worst thing that any of these jobs can tell you is no, but it doesn't hurt to try, you know, apply regardless if they're asking for, they're, they're looking for unicorns. Most hiring managers, and sad to say a lot of, uh, a lot of HR managers, HR recruiters, they don't, they don't know what they're looking for. They'll just put so many requirements, so many, like a, like a 10 page job description, apply. If you feel that, and, 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 and this is more to Rod's point, you know, obviously don't apply for something you have absolutely no idea what it is that right. you're doing with that. But if you feel that you can, if even if you don't 100% satisfy the job requirements, try to apply anyways. Like I said, I passed over a lot of opportunities. Um, in that video, like I said, it's the second point, bullet point there that talks about, uh, he literally said how he got his first opportunity in InfoSec only by applying for a job even though it required a lot a, a little bit more uh, i think about he probably had like 50 percent, and i'm not saying this is across the board by any means but again the worst thing that could happen is for them to say no but he specifically at the five minute mark of that video he talks about how he got over that objection of he doesn't have the experience he doesn't have the background he doesn't have the degree he doesn't have the certain all that stuff they're looking for unicorns, but if you have that passion, that drive, if you're willing to put in the work, the OJT, like I mentioned a few slides back, that will take you so far. And that gentleman um, is one of the few guys that I follow on YouTube in the IT security space. Uh, he now has his own pen testing company where, you know, within the last decade, he went from a total noob to now having his own company um, where he's making like, you know, and again, this is not uh, a standard by any means, but it's his story. He's making over a hundred thousand per month now doing not just pen testing, but within his own company. But it all started with putting himself out there, learning, growing, getting the certifications and establishing his network. So I would definitely uh, recommend paying special attention uh, to that video just as a little bit more of a motivation for when you see stuff like that, because it definitely can uh, make you feel like, man, I don't have that experience. I don't have that knowledge, and I don't, even, I don't even want to apply because I don't want to waste their time. It doesn't matter. Go to that video, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I do also want to add. I hate to be that cheesy bumper sticker kind of girl, but y'all, y'all that know me, I am that cheesy bumper sticker kind of girl. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Fill out your resume. Don't just send in a regular CV. Create your CV according to that job post. That is a huge miss. If you just create one CV and just blast it out, you're missing a lot of opportunities. Take five minutes to tailor your CV to that job posting um, and you're gonna get a lot more response there. And if you don't have um, single mom, right? I did not get my bachelor's degree. Um, you know, I worked at it, worked at it, worked at it, but as a single mom, it just never happened. I just couldn't finish it. Um, but I got all my Microsoft certifications. I've got, I probably have 75 different certifications and I have on the job training and I am a bulldog. I don't stop. I never quit. Um, and that's what employers look for. It's not necessarily, I got, I landed many jobs that said, you must have a bachelor's degree. You must have a, a master's degree. 
I walked right in there and I'm like, this is my experience. This is what I've done. Um, and again, not much of a team player at the time. I'm much better now. Uh, but yeah, you don't know. They have to put those there to have a barrier of some sort. But um, as Hassan said, um, their HR, they don't know what they're looking for. They're just doing the job posting. You're probably not going to enter. You're only going to, they're going to be the gatekeeper for the first interview. After that, you're going to get the people that are going to ask you the real questions about your real experience. Um, so uh, that's my take on it, Rod. I agree. It's, uh, don't be discouraged and try again. Um, and I went, I, I wasted, I think I wasted a lot of time myself looking into these job sites where I was being denied by HR. Um, HR is looking for all these keywords, right? The way to go around that is to join associations, network, network as much as you can. Uh, even Twitter, even um, uh linkedin where you can you know don't be shy reach out i get i get all the time pinged by people that say hey can you give me a recommendations for this job uh and sometimes i'm like well do i know you or let me see you uh, let me see what your your experience is you look like you know you you might fit yeah i'll, I'll give you a recommendation not a problem but you had to try it again and obviously when you see um Usually my impression when I when I see those profiles is that they don't know what they're looking for. And when you talk to the hiring manager, the story is completely different. The hiring manager will tell you, oh, no, you know, you can know a little bit of this, but I want this. Right. And maybe that is what you have. So uh, usually that's the key. The key is to find who's the hiring manager, the HR. You know, the, the, I see 100 percent of the time. The hiring manager telling HR, I want this person. I don't care what you said. That's it. Right. So I, I will tell you one of the things I did. Um, I landed a pretty nice contract. Um, I uh, went after a particular company um, as a whale. And I found the owner of the company on LinkedIn. And then I found him on Meetup. This is total social engineering, guys. I found him on Meetup. And I found a particular group that he was in. And I put myself in that wine tasting dinner that he was going to be in. And I made sure I got seated next to him. And two months later, I had a nice juicy project. God, that's awesome. Stalk them, use the skills you have. And one of the things that landed that project <laughs> was a concert. That's what we bonded over. Axel Rose, we bonded over Axel Rose, if you can believe it. Yeah, I was just gonna throw in uh, my two cents, like you said, uh, Ms. Gizmo, as far as the, the gatekeepers. Guys, um, the, the, the degrees are nice, the certs are, are, are amazing. The way I, I always put it in a pecking order, experience over everything, like what you've done is more important than any of those pieces of paper. But the thing is, you have to get through the gatekeepers. But if you have that network, the gatekeepers won't matter. So kind of take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but balance it. Like, so yeah, you have the gatekeepers, you know, the bachelor's degree, the, the certifications to get through them uh, is one thing. But again, if you build those relationships and focus on your network, like I mentioned, the little hack in LinkedIn, find ways like Ms. Guzmo just mentioned, that's amazing. Hack your way into these, you know, that's, this is what the field is, cybersecurity. Like find, hack your way in, you know, build those relationships and it'll be so much easier to, to get where you want to go. But again, like take it with a grain of salt, you know, so if you have your degree, amazing. If you have the certs, amazing. You know, it doesn't hurt to go after the certs as long as it's not cost prohibitive for you. Uh, but definitely um, try to get around those those gatekeepers as best you can, because I can tell you from firsthand experience, if the hiring manager, the security guy or girl in that organization knows you, sees you or knows someone, you know, or so forth, the stone, you know, the six degrees of separation, yep. they'll they'll push you through. I promise you, Amy and whoever else is on this call that's wondering about that kind of thing. I want him. I want I want Amy. I don't care what you say. I don't care if she checks all those boxes. I want her. They'll get you through the gatekeepers better than having the perfectly crafted resume and all the all the degrees and certs that you could ever want like that will take you way further. So that's why I'm a huge proponent of, you know, networking and getting out of that 
you know, Shell, I wanted to say this, I couldn't think of the word earlier, but introvert, like a lot of us I find in IT are introverted, you know, we're to ourselves, but we can be social butterflies when we get around people who are passionate about what we're passionate about. And when you network with those people, it helps you to get out of that, so to speak, introverted shell because they're right up the same alley as you are as far as what you want to do in, in your career. So yeah. definitely reach out to those people, find those people and make that a priority. Like I said, for me, my personal opinion, experience over everything, networking and then degrees and certs fall under that. Like I said, for you know, that'll that'll be whatever the gatekeepers want to see, but your network is going to squash all that if you are passionate, you know, not wasting anyone's time, not you know, you, you say you want to do something, but you really don't show it with your projects and with your experience. So absolutely make sure you have the experience to back up what you say you want to do. And of course, that drive, like I mentioned, you know, to go along with that. And I'm sure Rod and anyone else on this call can kind of speak to that as well. Yeah, had I known the networking, known about the networking um, 30 years ago, had I embraced that 30 years ago, I would, my life would have been so much easier. My career would have been so much easier. I would have been so much further along. Um, but uh, yeah, I missed that. At, uh... Yeah, I was going to mention, Rod, Ms. Gizmo, um, I have to go run and get my kid. Um, I don't know if you, if you guys, I know you're going to, this is being recorded. So hopefully I'll look out for that. Uh, and you're going to give us your slide deck, yes? You're going to send me your slide deck? Yeah, I was going to ask because I have not done yep. this before. So I wasn't sure. I have this all in a PowerPoint. So you yep. just want me to uh, uh, email it to you or how should I give it to you? Slack. Post it in Slack. Got you. Yeah, Um. so I, I'm about to bug out real quick, but this is the last slide here. Um. But yeah, I'll let you guys, if you want to continue talking, Um. but I do have to run. I will send you that right now, Ms. Gizmo. Um. But first much. and foremost, thank you, Um. you guys, or last but not least, <laughs> thank you guys for uh, attending. Uh, I definitely look forward, if you're not already a part of the Hack Miami Slack group, the Hack Miami Meetup group. Uh, like I said, for me, it was like a blessing in disguise to be a part of this network of, of incredible knowledgeable people I would uh, impress upon you to not only be a part of this one I think SFISSA uh, South Florida that organization I'm not a part of it yet but I, I plan on being because that organization I've realized that the amount of professionals who are passionate about mm -hmm. IT security my good I went to one of their meetings it was a packed house at Nova where they meet uh, where they were meeting um, but just being in that group and then meeting up afterwards it was amazing so you guys hack Miami SFISSA and you know make that a part of your uh, your your daily habit to find more of those groups to be a part of so that you can get your name out there again it's all about who knows you and your passion for this field if you really are truly wanting to get into it to have as many people know how passionate you are guys but again uh my name is hassan johnson my contact information is in the slide deck um i definitely appreciate you guys hopping on i do gotta run but and i wish i could stay a little bit longer but again thank you guys so much for attending and i look forward to uh meeting up again like this in the future and hopefully in august like rod said we'll be doing this in person again so thank you guys thank you so much have a great thank day you. all you right rod rod it's all right. you wrap up buddy yeah, well, thank you very much, guys. We'll be announcing soon. Remember to join us at this lag um, and uh, uh, stay tuned. We're going to have more meetings and uh, more events. So thank you. Bye, guys.